G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and welcome back to the GT World Series Season number 3 now of the exhibition season in the Manufacturer's Cup for 2022 to 2023 uh, this is pretty much a follow-on from the previous video, but the previous video was very much focused on uh, looking at and analysing and forming an opinion on the new interpretation of Grand Valley that's appeared in Gran Turismo 7 a few days ago. Uh, of course, Grand Valley Highway 1, but in this video I'm actually going to show you the, a race I did later in the night, kicking it off, of course, with a qualifying session and a little bit of a track guide for Grand Valley Highway 1, which I think a lot of you will probably be interested in. Turn number one is uh, is a hairpin at the top of the hill, looking on the left-hand side, breaking on the 300-foot board and getting the car into there. Second gear and then up to third for some rotation and then power on the exit. You can use that kerb up on the outside as well. Turn number two, you can be uh, you can take it flat out and then turning in under the gantry. You can also take this corner flat out, but don't cut the white line. You'll get a penalty. 400-foot board heading into the downhill hairpin. Nice and tight to the apex because the corner seems to go on for a while. And then we're heading up into the tight and twisty middle section, turning in just before the 100-foot board. Gently on the brakes at the first apex and then cut in for the second apex. Cut the next one and then on the brakes gently uh, just before that corner and then dab brake again get it stopped and rotated for this hairpin here up towards the next corner turn number 11 uh, looking on the right hand side just before the 100 foot board uh, into there down into second gear nice and tight towards the exit because you want to open up this corner uh, downshift to second for some rotation and then apex just on the start of the bridge and then power out onto said bridge and then heading up towards the final sector three tenths purple there so we're on for a good lap braking just on the 100 foot board get it to the inside and then keep it tight to the inside too on the exit and then turn in gently for the second to last corner and then try and open up this final turn as much as possible i don't really have a great deal of references through there i was just doing it by feel uh, but it's fairly easy to get yourself into a good rhythm and now it's flat out all the way to the end through the final tunnel. It is difficult to see that, mi that uh, final apex, the middle apex, um, but with the corner markers on to help me, uh, I'm able to get through there. Okay, up towards the line, it's a 45.2, which is a little bit slower than what I did in the earlier slot of the day. Um, so a little bit disappointing in that sense, uh, but it's good enough for fifth on the grid. And if I had done that same lap I did earlier in the previous video in the earlier slot, I probably would have been first or second, but oh well, we must move on. We're going to start fifth for, the, for this one. Now, traditionally, if I was starting fifth, I'd probably go for the medium tyres, but I decided no, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to go on the soft tyres because I feel like there's more time to lose by falling back in the pack and getting stuck behind people uh, than there are by starting on the soft tyre and doing the medium stint later. So we're just going to try and minimise our time loss at the start of this race and do our best to maximise these soft tyres. Uh, so just making sure we're meeting every apex, carrying the maximum amount of speed through the corners as we can. It's not going to get off to a great start because I'm going to cut this corner here. I think it's turn four and then we're going to get ourselves of course a penalty a half second penalty we do run it quite deep into the hairpin as well and the uh, Mazda RX Vision slides up the inside Salamander does so I was a little bit worried at this stage or oh, what tire is Salamander on but we'll give him the benefit of the doubt for now and hope he's on the soft tire it's not really going to be a great deal of worry for me just at this stage because my whole attention was completely focused on this penalty that I'm about to serve. Getting a penalty at the start of the race is pretty much the worst time to get a penalty because you're guaranteed to lose the maximum amount of spots possible uh, in, in that case. So we're going to serve this half second penalty on the bridge. And we're definitely going to lose a position to Darth Chan and there's another uh, car behind them that we may potentially lose as well and I really should have defended this but the Lamborghini behind makes the most sensible decision I've ever seen someone make coming up to someone serving a penalty and that is to not try and overtake them so thank you Noel AA doing absolute wonders here and you can see 
They made the right decision because all they've done there is made a complete hash of the final chicane and they've dropped down into ninth. So they would have just lost more time had they tried to get an overtake on me. Perhaps they were sitting behind and going, no, I know he's faster, he just made a slight mistake. In which case, I really, really appreciate that. We're going to use the slipstream of the Honda NSX and try and recover a position here, but coming into turn one, it's not quite going to be close enough. And in fact, the uh, status of the situation on the exit, oh, on the end of the first, First lap is not that good to be honest because we've lost a couple of positions there we started fifth we're down into seventh losing a position to Salamander and Darth Chan so we are going to have to try and move eyes uh, move forward in the race eyes forward in the race and not make any further mistakes and that includes getting a penalty for any reason uh, needless to say uh, but we're catching up to Darth Chan quite quickly here so I'm beginning to think that they may be on the medium tires uh, which is another worry about this strategy I've chosen is that if you do make a couple of mistakes the likelihood of any cars being behind you or, or being on the harder tyre is even higher than it is if you started first or second. So we are going to have to watch out for that and make sure we don't lose too much time stuck behind cars on slower tyres and I would suggest that Darth Chan having started as deep in the field as they did would probably be on the medium tyre. So exiting the chicane on the exit of lap 2 there we're much much closer this time. You, we're going to use the slipstream to our advantage. We are, of course, in the Aston Martin DBR9, which is a pretty good in a straight line. That Honda NSX, I also happen to know, has received... Oh, I was going to say has received a buff, but maybe I'm thinking of the Group 4 NSX, along with all the four-wheel drives in there that received nerfs in this previous update. But nonetheless, we are going to have enough grunt in a straight line to get up the inside towards Turn 1, and that is Darth Chan dispatched and taken care of. So eyes forward once again, back to Salamander, driving that Mazda RX vision which I don't think is too much of a slouch in a straight line itself you can see we set a nice purple sector there uh, on up on my own time of a 146.6 on the previous lap we catch up to Salamander here so I am beginning to worry that Salamander is on the medium tyre which means we are going to have to try and get past him as quick as we possibly can and we don't get the best of exits out of that final chicane section in the junction you can have a look at how bunched up the top of the field is there we're only 2.2 seconds away from the leader at this stage as the mitts are Bishi sends it down the inside, makes contact with the Subaru. They get a three-second penalty for the contact as well. They have contact with Salamander and make slight contact with the barrier on the left-hand side. We're going to capitalise. We're not hanging around up the inside there. Slight lift off the throttle to make sure we don't cut this turn five and then hard on the brakes for turn number six. Actually, I think it's turn four and five, not five and six, uh, but that's okay. We managed to get back up into fourth, taking advantage of some of the shenanigans and happenings that have happened with the leaders at the start of this race. And now we're just still trying to get past Salamander, who gets a pretty poor run through there. So we're right under the rear wing now, two tenths behind. If we're cl this close exiting the final chicane, you can bet your bottom dollar that we are gonna be able to get past by the end of that straight, thanks to the grunt of this DBR9. Now, I have mentioned that the DBR9 is pretty good in a straight line, and that does come at a cost, and the cost, uh, the invoice of which is through the corners. So we are going to have to make sure we don't scrub the tyres too much and just slow down a little bit extra than perhaps Salamander does. We're catching up into this final corner, but we just make a slight move to try and put him off, and he does run a bit wide. It's not enough to get past him, though, but hopefully it just shakes him and rattles him, and he makes a mistake through this section here. Make sure we don't make a mistake ourselves. Slight little bobble off the final apex, and that gap has opened up to five-tenths of a second, so Salamander's got a pretty good run through there. Perhaps that RX Vision is a little bit better through that section, because I'm worrying at this stage that Salamander is either very off the pace on the softs, or he's on the medium tyres. So four-tenths behind him at this stage, and once again, not quite close enough to get that move done. We're still only 2.8 seconds off the lead at this stage, so we're still well within touching distance of trying to pick up this victory. But as it stands at this stage, our main goal is to just get past Salamander, who comes for a very late apex. We make a slight bit of contact, but it's nothing too major. At the end of this lap now, we've once again caught back up to Salamander. Let's see if we can get a better exit than we did the previous time. We get a much better exit that time. Still a slight bit of oversteer is that Mazda RX seems to be able to put the power down a little bit better as it jumps over the top of that final curb compared to this Aston Martin but nonetheless we are still just about close enough to be able to slipstream uh, the RX Vision and try and get something done up into turn one as that RX Vision shifts into its top gear we hang in fifth because sixth gear in this car you don't want to touch it's just way too long but we managed to 
get up the inside, hard on the brakes, get it stopped on the apex, make sure we get the power down on the exit, and that is Mr. Salamander dispatched and taken care of. So we've now got to just keep tabs on that gap. It was two tenths when we overtook him, of course, and then by the time we go down onto the bridge, in the same lap, that gap's opened up to one second. So that tells me I was very much being held up by Salamander, given the fact I was able to gain a second just by not being directly behind him. And it pretty much remained that way until lap number 9, which is when we're actually going to make our pit stop. So once again, as we did in the last video, uh, we are going to go from softs to the mediums, given that both are actually required in this race. That means we have to use both in order to avoid a one-minute penalty. Lewis and Chanhara, the driver that was ahead of me and the driver that was behind me, respectively, also pit in at the end of lap 9, and it looks like Tanty B. Quick, the driver currently in the lead. I don't quite recognise what nationality, uh, what flag that particular one is uh, but nonetheless they stay out for an extra lap so it'll be interesting to see if we manage to make an overcut or an undercut on them it'll actually be an undercut given that we've pitted a lap earlier uh, so let's see what we can do we come out in fifth there's quick theo and chan uh, chan's come out just two cars ahead of me actually i'm trying to work out what to go with all the positions is uh, lewis of course does come out ahead of me he also pitted in i'm not sure if chan pitted as well or if they're a car that's from deeper in the field that is still yet to pit uh, so we'll see uh, we'll see what the uh, what the status is once we all circulate once again and move back to the pit entry and see uh, what the situation is in terms of other cars stopping look at that quick and theo are in the pits it looks like chan's driven past so chan must have actually taken their pit stop they must be on the soft uh, they must be on the medium tire now of course as well i think where did chan start that's what i'm confused about here i'm not sure where chan started but did they start third or something i don't know fourth were they ahead of me i don't no, I'm confused about Chan, I'll be completely honest with you, but we must move on. We managed to get past Quick and, uh, what was the other guy, Tant? Tant? Oh, I don't know, Theo, Theo. Um, we managed to get past those two, Quick and Theo, those are the two drivers. We managed to get past both of those, we've undercut them quite significantly. And I wasn't sure what had happened to them at this stage, because that is a massive undercut that we've been able to perform. Uh, but we're not going to question it and just continue driving. We get a really bad exit out of here, and the Subaru gets up the inside. Ah! Oh. What happened there? Ah! Oh. And we've had an absolutely massive moment there. I'm not really sure what happened, but I, I do know just how incredibly frustrating it was to be involved in an incident at that point in the race. And Chanhara, mate, I am so sorry. I, I, I don't know. Was that my fault? We're going to have to check the replay at the end of the race, but I did continue on. Oh, man. Obviously, it wasn't on purpose, but... It's like, whose fault was that? Did he come across my nose or did I bump his back end and send him around? We managed to put the icing on the terrible cake. What is that penalty? We managed to put the icing on the terrible cake and also get a one second penalty. So it's been an absolutely shocking half a lap. We've taken out a car, lost a position, and got a penalty. Is there is there anything else that could happen? Maybe we could run out of fuel. That'd be the that'd be uh, that'd be worse as well. But that's a one second penalty, so that's going to be painful. So that gap to Salamander, who managed to capitalise on the incident I had with Chanhara, was 2.8 seconds ahead, and they're now 3.9 seconds ahead. So we've lost more than a second obviously given we also had to get back up to speed but let's get through this final chicane so oh man so frustrating just having a slight moment like that you have to make a split second decision or it's not even a decision it's just a slight mistake all right keep fighting you two up ahead keep fighting but I don't know, we're just going to go eyes forward with Salamander and Lewis and watch that gap as the laps roll on. 3.8 seconds on lap 14, down to 3.4 by lap 15, and let's see what it is on the next lap. 2.8 by lap 16, so that, that gap is definitely coming down as the two fight up ahead. And as we get to lap 16, if we have a look ahead, it looks like they're side by side. Heading through this slight left puff of smoke between them as they make contact. It looks like Salamander's up the inside. Is Lewis going to be able to hang it around the outside? It doesn't look like it as he assumes third position. But this is the final lap now, so as long as these two keep fighting through this final lap, perhaps I might have a chance of trying to scrape this podium back, which I honestly believe I could have kept had I not taken out the Subaru. But we'll see if it was my fault at the end of the race anyway. Uh, but 
it looks like Salamander has successfully got past Lewis. And I think we're all on... Actually, no, Salamander's on the soft tyre. That's something I forgot to talk about. I did happen to notice during the race that Salamander pitted in on the medium tyre. So we were stuck behind them for quite a while. So they're now going to be on their soft tyre later in the stint. Someone's had an incident there. It looks like Salamander's uh, gone a little bit wide and crashed into the barrier on the exit. And that just means they're going to get a really poor run out of there. And that gap's down to one second. And with only about a sector to go left of this race, are we able to uh, scrape something together and piece together some form of a podium, vi uh, podium result here, podium paying result on the back of the podium? Let's see what we can do. Get a good exit out onto the bridge. It's not actually that good of an exit. That gap is still nine tenths. We're going to have to get an absolutely mammoth right-hander in the tunnel at the end of this bridge in order to have any definition of an opportunity of slipstreaming past Salamander before the finish line. Let's see what we can do. He is going to have the advantage of also having the slipstream off Lewis as well, driving that Corvette, but that American machine has quite a bit of horsepower, and I don't think Salamander's got to be close enough to get that move done. We're three seconds off the lead at this stage, so I was looking at that gap quite frustrated with what could have been had I avoided the incidents and penalties. Ah, oh, three seconds away. Oh, what? Fifth. What the hell happened at the end? Ah. Oh. Five seconds away from the win. Ah, oh, that's frustrating. Oh, I don't know what happened with that leader. So what I thought was going to be a fourth turned out to be a fifth because Quick reappeared. So, remember, they pitted in and I wasn't sure what had happened. I assumed I undercut them massively and then they, they got involved in an incident, but uh, they reappeared. So, I was really confused about that. So, it was something dodgy with the pit lane. They were obviously stuck, in inverted commas, in the pit lane, uh, but they were actually still in the race. And then the, the positions, you know, corrected at the end of the race when we crossed the line, but... Yeah, weird shenanigans there, but that total time as well was uh, was slower than what I did last video, so once again I had the pace to win. But this is the incident. Let's have a look as the Subaru makes its way past and... Oh, it's just awkward contact on my front corner, on his rear corner. It's just enough to send his car around. But really, whose fault is it? That's what I'm trying to ascertain there. And honestly, from that angle... It looks like when I try to open up the left-hander on the exit of the bridge, that's when I slightly, faintly move to the right, and that is when it sends his car around. There, you can see I cross the centre line. Oh, dear. I, uh... Starting to think that was my fault. Let's have a look from his perspective. So he gets up the inside, capitalising on my poor exit, and he stays... Oh. Look. We have the uh, we have the assistance available of using the actual painted lanes that are on the track, and it looks like that Chanhara actually stayed in his right lane, whereas I drifted from the left lane uh, slightly over the centre dividing line, and that is when I made the contact. So, man, I just don't know. I just don't know. I like to think I'm a pretty good driver, but. When I have silly incidents like this, you can see I'm in the lane and then I just drift over the centre line and that's when the contact is made. And then Salamander was actually very close to running up my backside but managed to actually uh, not. But I guess, I guess it's my fault. This is something else I captured during the replay is this is some of the cars. So I think Theo and Quick are two of these cars here. And you can see on my end, they're stuck in the pit lane jumbling about. So, I thought that was quite funny. But, I, I kind of felt like I had more pace than what I displayed in that race. So, I decided to enter the next slot, uh, which was going to be, I think, the third last of the night or something. Uh, but when we click on the entry button, it's a funny looking Grand Valley, I'll be honest. It had changed to Nürburgring GP and I was very confused about what happened. Uh, but it turns out that Gran Turismo did that on purpose and there was an issue and they had to change the track mid, uh, mid evening. I don't know what you'd call it. Mid round. That's it. Mid round. So they changed it from Highway 1 to Nürburgring GP and then round one of the Nations Cup, which is due on this Saturday, uh, has also been changed from uh, the south version of Highway 1 uh, to one of the ends at Maggiore, which is a significant downgrade in my opinion, but... 
in my opinion, doesn't really matter. But wow, wow, wow. Okay. A lot happened at the end of that race there. There's been an incident that was probably my fault. There's been a track change. There's been all sorts going on. Uh, but what I'm going to do, track change. I actually did a couple of these Nürburgring races uh, because they nullified the points as well. So the points, which was 264 uh, for that fifth place there that I just did, uh, that's going to be nullified. So I actually had to do the next slot if I wanted to bring home the points result from round one. So that's going to be the next video. As for the incident, uh, I think it's my fault. I drifted out of my lane. Not that sticking to your lane is a rule in motorsport if there are painted lanes on the road, uh, but it's just easy. It makes it very easy to see that I did drift over towards him, and that's what that's when the contact occurred. Uh, so Chanhara, mate, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uh, I really should, the re really the penalty system should have dealt out a penalty for that, so I don't know what it's doing, it's too busy dealing out penalties for uh, people slightly cutting the white line by one millimetre, but I guess that's what we've all been asking for, and here it is, it's just frustrating when you think you're on the track, but I guess I obviously wasn't, but I, I don't know, mixed bag of a video today, so if you somehow enjoyed it, do hit that like button, if you'd like to see more, do hit subscribe and make sure to leave a comment as well as questions, comments and constructive criticism as always and very much appreciated. But that's going to be the end of this one today and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.